Isabella Christa Pöko. Last time I came down to the beach, I was heavily pregnant. This time round, I've got a little baby. She was born on the 16th of April at 5.21 in the morning. So she is now, today, she is three weeks and three days old. So she's still very, very tiny. And she loves being in the carrier. She really does. That's her favorite place to be, going for a walk. So to not wake her up, I'm going to keep walking. So parenthood, hey? <laughs> It's been quite an adjustment, which I'm still making. It is harder than I thought. It's a lot more crying involved than I thought, but it's also really nice. She's now starting to smile a little bit, which is so cute. She's up a bit more, she's interacting a bit more. Every day she's more alert. So it's very, very nice. Oh, there's a dolphin. There's lots of dolphins. tell you a bit more about birth and how this one went, how we went. day though. It's already been Mother's Day since and in fact today little Isabella is four weeks old and she's not having a very good day. She's been crying a lot. You might be able to see like I'm, I'm not looking the freshest. I've honestly been surviving on maybe three hours of sleep a night if I get lucky and that's not even in one go. <laughs> um, anyway, okay so birth. How did it go? Well, pretty average. <laughs> now, as you know, I had um, gestational diabetes, so I had to be induced. My due date was the 14th of April, and I was meant to be induced on that day. So I went into the clinic on the 13th, and then they decided to write for my cervix. They would give me the gel, a hormone gel. It worked quite well, it functioned, like I got some contractions. The cervix softened and I even dilated to three centimeters. I already was, I think, one when I first came in. Yeah, but then nothing happened from that. So it was just so the cervix would dilate, so they would then next day be able to break my waters, which is the whole purpose. And then they can put in the drip, the hormone drip, and then induction really starts. So I went in on a Saturday on the 13th, and on Sunday on the 14th, I was meant to be induced, and then nothing happened. Like they didn't have any space available for me. There were people coming in having babies. They weren't induced, they had natural labour, so um, spontaneous labour, so they couldn't really send them away. <laughs> so I had to wait. The next day, nothing happened either. So eventually we left the hospital and just for a little break. And when we came back, within five minutes of us being back on the ward, the people from the birth suite came in and said, oh, it's your turn. And then all of a sudden, I was being induced and I thought, oh my god, am I, am I ready for this? And of course I wasn't. And that was about, I think it was 2.30 and um, they checked me over, I was still pretty good to go and then pretty much, yeah, straight away they um, broke my waters and then very, very quickly those contractions started to hit. Oh my god. It was no fun and I think I had like five, six contractions within 10 minutes and I just kept getting stronger and stronger and I thought to myself, I cannot do this. I'd done about four and a half, five hours of labour and 
I knew it was only going to get worse. And they kept coming stronger and they became longer. And there was just no breaks in the middle. Like there was, and, and it was all in the back as well. Like the front, the belly would tighten. And then, you know, you had your contractions. And then the front would relax, but the back would never relax. So there was never a full break in between to, to catch a breath or to just relax. There, it was just a constant flow of pain. And I don't know if this is normal for every birth or labor or if this is because it's being induced, I'm not sure. Or was it just me? But it was, it wasn't, I couldn't, I couldn't deal with it. So after five hours, I um, asked for an epidural. I jumped every other pain relief <laughs> and I went straight for the epidural. And the relief, the relief was so good. And then we were just chilling out, Mark and I we were listening to music and the hours flew by so quick. But what did happen was I started to get the shakes. So Mark went to get the midwife and she checked my temperature and I, had a, I started to have a fever. So it was 39.3 or something at that point. And they got all quite concerned. They thought I had an infection and that then obviously impacts on labor and, and baby, how are she doing? And I thought, oh my God, now I'm gonna have a C-section probably. So, they put me on antibiotics immediately because baby's heart rate came up quite high too and, and stayed up consistently. So they needed to treat it for us both to, to remain healthy. They kept assuring me that, or reassuring me that it didn't need to mean that I would have to have a C-section. It was still progressing all quite well. Um, I was dilating well, baby was doing okay once this was all under control. All of us decided we would continue with them. this sort of Natural birth. Hi. Hello, my darling. Hello. Oh. And then at around one o'clock, they said I was um, ten centimeters now, and they would leave me for an hour for the body to prepare and get get used to the ten centimeters, and then we would start pushing. I had no idea how bloody hard pushing is. Like even with an epidural, it's just. Oh my god, you need to have real stamina for it. And I pushed for almost two hours. They could see her head already, Mark even saw the head, but um, somehow she was a bit stuck. Her, she, she was completely correctly positioned, her head was in the right position, everything was correct. Like she did all the right things, I did all the right things, but somehow she just couldn't get past this last little point. And I just ran out of energy. I just found it so hard to put. I couldn't push anymore. I thought this this child is never going to come out. The doctors came in. They um, consulted each other, and then they decided um, after pushing for so long and it wasn't productive anymore. And I was exhausted, and baby probably wouldn't have gone on for much longer either. Um, to get me down to theatre and get do a forceps delivery. So I had an episiotomy, and within two pushes, she was out. And, and they lay her on me and I couldn't even really see her. Like, I saw her briefly, like this bloody body, <laughs> blood-covered body. They held up and then put her in a towel and lay her on my, on my belly, but I couldn't really see because my head was further back. And I just held her and I just cried and cried. And then, um, oh jeez, I could cry again. <laughs> and two pediatricians, so they then took her to that little um, table where they check her over. And I could see that her heart, not her heart, but her chest was like really working very hard. Um, like going in and out, like it didn't look right, you know. And they put a little mask on her to help her breathing, to slow it down, she was breathing too fast. They rolled her over to me and put her on my chest, but only for like a couple of minutes or so, unfortunately. When I got to hold her, she, she screamed at me. <laughs> they got to hold her and touch her little face say hello and then um, because she wasn't doing so well they um, had to take her to the end and ICU and Mark went with them and I stayed in theatre. Five hours later I went to see her in the special care unit and then we had the longest snuggle ever. I was I was so so exhausted but I just didn't want to leave her there. The nurses there kept telling me to go and rest but I didn't want to go. I couldn't. How can you leave a little baby there? Just on her own. She needed mummy. Mm. They said they would have to keep her overnight just to make sure she's okay. 
and she'd be able to come out next the next day. <laughs> Hello. Ah, guck mal die Äuglein. Ganz blau. Ganz blau. Hm? Ah, big yawn. Did you see that? Ah. But yeah, that is it. This is how little Isabella came into this world. With a rocky start. But she is gorgeous. She's very cute. Alrighty. I'm not sure how frequently I will be doing videos, if I will. I'll see you when I see you. Bye bye, tschüss. Well, look, we're going home. Ah, first car ride. And she doesn't mind at all. <laughs> Fitting uh, music. Baby's pretty famous for... Um... Ah. Parking car rides.